Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob from RV Talk Radio. Welcome to episode 48. Nice to have you. Still hotter than the Dickens down here in Arizona. And we tried to do some cooking and failed. Stay tuned. So if you got a chance to watch some of our videos from last week, <laughs> we're down in Arizona and the temperature got up to 115. And so there's not a whole lot of things you can do when it's 115 degrees out. But we thought it would be quite humorous to find out if we could actually cook an egg on the concrete. So uh, our neighbor thought that was kind of a curious thing to do too. So we grabbed the neighbor and grabbed an egg out of the refrigerator and walked out to the uh, blacktop. And I think we measured it uh, being around 160 degrees. And it was literally black blacktop. And we thought, all right, so get the cameras out. We'll crack open an egg and... Put it on the road there, kind of out of everybody's way. And we just sat there. Nice and gooey. There was a yolk there. It was nice and clear. About a minute into it. Nice and gooey. Nice and clear. <laughs> the yolk there. Five minutes into it. Nice and gooey. Nice and clear. It's <laughs> still a yolk there. And it's like, what the heck? It didn't cook. So, you know, it's like, well, what the heck do we do wrong? And we, you know, we had the little uh, laser temperature gauge out there. And so, now, you know, we took the egg straight out of the refrigerator. So we thought, okay, maybe the egg was too cold. And then we put it on the concrete, cooled it off, and didn't work. <clears throat> so we thought, all right, let's try some other things. We grabbed a couple more eggs, sat them outside to get them the room temperature, if you want to call it that. And we also had to go to Camping World to pick up some more of that um, insulation for the windows and we'll tell you about that in a minute so anyway we uh, um, put an egg outside put it on a shiny cookie sheet and thought well let's let it sit out all day long and see if it hard boils and then when we get back we'll check it so we get back and uh, grab the egg and we get the cameras out crack the egg open and it's not cooked inside it's still raw so that didn't work so we thought, well, let's take that egg now. So, you know, room temperature. It's been sitting out all the side. Let's put it on the concrete. It should cook this time. <laughs> it didn't cook. <laughs> and then last but not least, we didn't decide to give up after that. We got some tin foil, And they said, well, if you could use tin foil, And then the rays from the sun will reflect off the shiny side of the tin foil. Put a little uh, uh, butter in there. And that'll cook it. Try that. That didn't work either. So we threw our hands up in the air and, and surrendered. It just didn't happen. But it was fun trying, and we got some good video out of it. And I uh, gave us something to do on a Saturday on a very hot day. It was so hot. So anyway, cooking the egg on the concrete was not as easy as it sounds. So uh, we even watched some other videos. And it was a guy in Death Valley, and he tried it, and he had the same results. Couldn't cook the egg. So, I don't know, I don't think it's a complete myth, but we were not able to do it. But the next thing uh, you know, we, I did mention real quickly is during this Saturday, uh, we decided we, it's time to tackle these windows. we got to block them a little bit to get the sunshine to help cool this thing, keep this RV cool. So we got some of that, um, um, it's a kind of a, a insulation that's silver. I'm not sure what the proper name of it is, but uh, so you can cut it very easily. And so we got the tape measure out, started doing our windows, started uh, hitting all the different windows that we had in the RV, and then we're, uh, we labeled them. So when we do take them off, we can easily match them up with the window again when we use them in the future. Anyway, what a difference. That really does make a difference in two ways. <laughs> when it, it definitely helps... The, uh, the air conditioners keep it cool in here. The bad part is you feel like you're living in a cave. It's dark and dreary. So, you know, if you're working every day like Sherry's, she's leaving every day and that stuff, it's not bad. But for me, it's been a little 
depressing. It's uh, hard enough that we're in the RV all the time and it's too hot to go outside. We can go out in the morning and you can go out in the evening, but during the day, especially when you need to get your sanity or clear your head a little bit, uh, it's actually a little depressing. So I don't know what to say more about that other than the fact that it uh, really has helped uh, all the air conditioners keep it cool in here with some extreme heat. Uh, been, I've been comfortable, uh, but I've also been sitting in the dark all day. <laughs> a little depressing. So anyway, there's the pros and cons of blocking your windows for the heat. It does work, but it is a little depressing. So now that we've been kind of cooped up a little bit and uh, we got these hot summer, uh, a lot of people are kind of still wondering well, why are we staying down here in these hot temperatures. And uh, I've kind of explained that a little bit in the last show, but we're just kind of letting you know we're kind of regrouping. And so one of the things we mentioned is we got sailing classes coming up. So we got our books. So Sherry and I have all this week to kind of get up the snuff on the basics. Um, we're taking a, what they call an ASA sailing course. It's uh, the basics and it's uh, part of a series of classes. And once you finish, you can actually go to any marina that if you want to uh, rent a cruiser uh, up to 50 feet, you'll be um, you'll have the credentials to do so with an ASS certification. And um, ASA yeah, ASA <laughs> certification. And uh, at the same time, um, we're just kind of looking at all the different options, what we're going to do. Our ultimate goal, if it, if, if it comes to be, is to, you know, of course, always have our uh, stay with the RV stuff, and we will always have RV and RV Talk Radio and that stuff. But, you know, with the changing of the guard a little bit to Outdoor Travel Channel, we want to introduce boating and stuff like that too. So, um, keeping us busy because we're kind of like, all right, what's the logistics for all this? So, uh, it's all good and it's a lot of planning and it's like you, you don't want to announce anything because things could change, uh, op opportunities come along, and then with the new radio station, things are uh, kind of got things cooking on that. And it's really in the early stages of all this stuff, but we do know that uh, everything's going to get much more exciting. It could be within a month. It could be within six months. We don't know. <laughs> it is like frustrating. We'd love to tell you the whole the whole scenario, but we don't know yet. And uh, um, anyway, so with all that going on, we uh, the the radio program's been going good at Outdoor Travel Radio. That's been um, keeping us pretty busy it's kind of leveled out to uh, where we like it right now we noticed that the, uh, it, our viewers are growing we appreciate that a lot just want to remind you it's uh, just take the chance go to outdoor travel radio and you can just click on the top corner there and, and give it a listen and you can actually load a application right on your cell phone and listen to it and it's kind of fun in these shows this show you're listening to uh, get loaded up there too and they play uh, I think uh, four times in a day uh, one at nine, one at twelve, one at five and something around nine in the evening so these shows are on there too So, <laughs> and then the other thing that's been kind of fun is we have the uh, old time radio shows of Gunsmoke and uh, uh, what is the other one um, Sherlock Holmes at seven o'clock pacific time which is nine o'clock eastern <clears throat> and we like that because Sherry and I, you know, we walk, try to walk every evening when we can. So we kind of included that to take the cell phone with us, lock in on our show. Seven o'clock, we get to listen to Gunsmoke and, uh, and our other show and just makes the day go kind of fast and get the walking done. So that's going good. And uh, uh, lots of dialogue going on with some other folks. We always tell people that if you're already affiliated with your own channel or have things going on and you'd like to do some collaboration with us, uh, give us a holler. Uh, just remember, all of our websites, just go to the contact page and shoot a note to us, and we try to get back to you as fast as possible. And uh, speaking of that, you know, just talking about feedback, we uh, 
you know, we always get all kinds of different kinds of feedback. Uh, one was kind of interesting we got this week. One person was saying that uh, we talked, I think they only listened to one show. And, you know, we talked about other channels or other organizations doing things like last week or week before that we talked about gone with the winds before that was less junk more um, more travel uh we've worked with freedom theory spot the scots all these different people so it, uh it can sound like that we're just focused on one channel at a time and um not true um and then but we also if we were really impressed with something or we're doing something similar and we know that you might be listening to those other channels too, we try to make sure we give you a good picture of what we're up to and then how it compares to others. So uh, the comment was is we're uh, uh, either copying another um, program or something like that or, or uh, something that they're doing. And it's like, well, all of us that are doing RV shows are in a sense copying each other, if you want to look at it that way. Um, you always want to find other channels and other opinions and resources that have interest in things that you're interested in. And at the particular time, Sherry and I want to add the water world a little bit to our channel, but not the same way. Uh, we're going to find out if we like the sailing aspect, but we're kind of power kind of people. The other thing is we're really into salmon and crabbing and things like that up in the northwest totally different we're not big bahama mamas and uh, uh mexico kind of people so totally different um but we're also sharing resources and, and and actually dialoguing with these other channels and so that's what you don't see and so um other channels actually do talk to other channels <laughs> and and uh we get their opinion like for example our um because we'll have a real drop in income and things like that, we will also start a new Patreon um, account. And so we've been working with other channels to figure out what's the best way to maintain something like that. What kind of uh, uh, tools and, and, and things do we have to have available to be able to support our supporters and patrons. So um, if you'd like to become a patron, uh, don't hesitate. The uh, on uh, links below in the description, you can check out our program. We can it's slowly getting changed to show you what some of the new missions are, but they're not completely in there yet because we're still defining them and we have to make it real clear. But anytime we can get some help, we'd appreciate it. And the more time goes on, the more help we're going to need because we're going to be spending some serious monies into some new stuff here. So <laughs> we're looking forward to it. And it's going to give you guys such variety and great things to see from RV related to outdoor re recreation and a combination of all kinds of activities that you can do as an RVer. So we're looking forward to that. We really appreciate the feedback. And uh, see, what else did uh, we had another uh, uh, feedback I wanted to bring up? Um, I think it was uh, actually, I think it was the same comment where they were suggesting there was some other. Uh, shows the milestone against and it's like well yeah we do listen to the other shows and stuff but we have our own we want to be original in as far as our content and how we handle this so it is more personal on this side it's more uh, spiritual on this side if you want to put it that way uh, there is so many platforms out there that are uh, how to you know how to do do it yourself kind of uh, rv tips and things like that uh it doesn't make sense for me to tell you how to flush your tanks. It doesn't really make sense for me to how to winterize your RV. We talk about it in general, but uh, I swear when winter comes, you'll see like 25 versions of winterizing your RV. And when the summer comes, you're going to see just like the put, you know, blocking your windows. You'll see 25 versions of that. So we kind of stay, uh, we let them do that and we don't want to, um, uh, that's what some of those channels are famous for is a really good um, do-it-yourself vid uh, videos and that's not you know we're not trying to be them too so <laughs> anyway just like there was a time that we were going to be a big directory many years ago but we saw that there's plenty of really good directories out there already for RV or parks and stuff like that so why build another one so 
we just uh, went a different direction. So we're going to just kind of go the route we're going. We get lots of good feedback. We do love even to be criticized as long as it's professional and, and that last one was. And uh, so to address some of that is uh, uh, the big thing was trying not to repeat ourselves too much. But we also got new listeners every week. So we tend to kind of go back and, and you know, kind of bring people up to speed because not, not, you know, just like the last person, I don't think they've gone back and listened to older episodes to realize that we talk about different aspects of different channels, uh, all always in positive ways, um, uh, but not the same ones all the time. So anyway, thank you so much for your feedback, folks. Make sure you go to any of our websites like RV Talk Radio. You can go straight to the contact page and let us know what's on your mind or things that we're doing good or well or, or you'd like to see us improve on. Uh, there's always an improvement and I always wish I was a better speaker and things like that but the only way you can get better at it is keep practicing so here I am <laughs> So, and I got to do it for this show and I got to also do it for RV Talk Radio so uh, time boy it's finding time to do all this stuff and we really enjoyed that uh, we uh, actually just had a chance to chat with uh, the people that uh, run the boat, a uh, sailing boat called the Resolute. Uh, they actually are a young couple that have a sailboat and they went down to Mexico. Then they just crossed over to Hawaii and then they'll be coming back and going up to Alaska. And uh, uh, we wanted to talk to them because they are using some tools and resources that we're uh, uh, getting ready to use. And uh, so we ca actually contact them it was really fun to talk to them really nice uh, nice people they're over in hawaii right now i think they're there for about a month doing some boat repairs and then they'll be crossing uh the pacific again over to uh alaska so good for them and uh, uh i think they call it sailing the resolute or something like that is the name of their channel uh just type in resolute sa sailing and you'll find them uh we've actually tried to post them on some of our websites and share their videos uh, they do really good photography they have a hard time getting stuff uploaded because they are in a lot of places without internet and so uh, it becomes a problem for them to get the things uploaded so anyway just talking about them a little bit the big thing you uh, if you're in the RVing and you're really going to be into boondocking a lot uh, I highly recommend that you pay attention to some of these uh, especially the sailboat people, um, the ones that are live aboards and are traveling, because they are probably more of a boondocker than some RVers will ever be. Reason being is they truly do get, especially going down to Mexico and stuff like that, limited on their water, and they got to produce their power, and they've got a lot of electronics they have to have on, not just maybe, kind of, sort of. Um, and not all of them have generators, and when they don't have generators, they got to use solar. So there's some really uh, in-depth conversations about how they produce their power, how they use their equipment, how they leave lights on. They got to have anchor lights on and certain uh, safety equipment on at nighttime. And if you really want to know a lot about um, the durability, you might say, of solar and boondocking and, and water and things like that uh, some of those channels are really good ones to watch and and sailing the resolute is uh, a great example of what go to their channel they don't have a whole lot of videos so it's uh, easy to kind of get through their stuff and see uh, how they deal with their what you would call an RVing boondocking so check them out and check out some other ones I think uh, uh, Sailing Miss Lone Star, and there's some other channels out there that uh, have some really interesting stories and in, and in surviving uh, with the basics of life, um, even when it comes to uh, 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 food and coming and also dealing with uh, waste. Uh, those are really good channels to learn from to become a good RV boondocker. So there you go. Oh, and, and that also reminds me of another note I got. Um, another one, it wasn't really negative, but it was another one that kind of, I think it was on episode 44, I got a note saying that uh, my last 10 minutes I was talking about 
boondocking and safety and uh, kind of reamed me a new one a little bit, which I it's okay. Uh, but I also try to say, guys, I'm kind of ne- neutral in this area. I just tell you that if you're going to boondock, that safety is the big thing. Well, the reply I got, well, well, if you know self-defense and you keep a weapon and all that stuff, I'm going, okay, great. Why would I want to boondock and have to have all that equipment and to protect myself? Is that looking over my shoulder is not relaxing? And so that's my point. And so, however, for those that have that durability, that self-protection uh, feeling uh, and are comfortable, power to you. But I sh- certainly don't expect my wife to know judo or uh, 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 be an expert in martial arts. And so uh, I and we don't aren't that thrilled about weapons. We um, we're not we're pro hunters and stuff like that. But uh, we're just not kind of handgun kind of people and stuff. So uh, I tell you the truth, we don't even have pepper spray. But uh, not, not that I mean, I'm not against it either. So please don't misinterpret that. I think boondocking is just bad, bad, bad. I think common sense boondocking and not getting a little bit too comfortable about just going anywhere. Because if you're not from a certain region, you don't know the neighborhoods and the people that well. And uh, so uh, I particularly wanted to make sure that I sent the word out there as safety. Um, to be uh, uh, really think through what you're going to do with the boondocking scenario and play some what ifs in your head of what would happen if someone did something or you weren't around people. Uh, there's always power in the numbers. So, anyway, I did appreciate that comment too. And so, anyway, keep them coming. I don't know why this was the week that people plowed into me a little bit, but. I- <laughs> That's good. It means that people are listening. So I appreciate that. Um, but anyway, so, so bring it on. Uh, keep the good uh, feedback coming. I'll try to address it the best I can. Never will I belittle you. Um, the big part is... Uh, uh, oh, and... Um, oh, gosh darn. We're <laughs> I'm on a roll here. I actually got one more. And I think it was also on episode 44. I was talking about financing an RV and somebody came back and because I told people that Sherry and I like newer RVs so we tend to just put a few thousand dollars down and then set up something that's within our means and uh, I was playing around with numbers and I was probably a little too loose about making it feel like oh you can live with 500 600 dollars a month well yes if you play the math I mean, my wife is an accountant so we know uh, it's really more than that if you really look at it is you know you're 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 losing money on the RV you're paying interest and you're not and sometimes and a lot of times you get underwater uh, as far as uh, uh, the depreciation versus how much you've paid down your principal we truly 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 understand that and so my uh, observation is is um, if you were going to buy, as Sherry and I like newer RVs and stuff, because I don't want to be fixing things all the time. So I'm willing to sacrifice the fact that I'm not going to make a money or I'm going to lose money in, in my trade-ins and stuff like that. If I was a more hands-on person and found a good used RV and I paid cash for it, that is the smartest thing you could do in, in, in some cases. Um if you like to tinker with things and stuff like that. And I don't. I have, I have to do radio shows and stuff. I don't have time to go out there and change bearings and, and fix things all the time. So Sherry and I tend to buy new. And so we we know that we're going to lose money that way. However, we're comfortable. We get from A to B most of the time pretty safely and with very little maintenance that we have to do. And we like warranties and things like that. And that's our preference. And And... So I, I hope that we didn't send out the message that, hey, just financing RV is okay. Uh, it, it's different for everybody, just like everybody has a different kind of RV and, and, and people do different activities. So anyway, so addressing that one too. So boy, hard week on Rob. <laughs> it was all good though. Every single debatable email that I got was very professional and very... Uh, 
but uh, I think some pe people get really locked in on one little thing you say and don't look at the big picture that uh, for us is that works good for me and Sherry but boy if you got a chunk of change and you can pay cash for something yeah go for it uh, $90,000 for an RV at my age I'd rather keep put 10000 that down keep $80,000 in a bank in case I have a heart attack and my insurance doesn't cover much I'd rather have be able to pay for that and uh, still survive and so that's kind of how we look at it, is keeping the cash reservoir full and so you know that's one way to look at it and yes that invisible money of depreciation and, and interest is something truly to consider when buying an RV so yes thank you for the feedback good 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 feedback and he's absolutely right that um, uh, is even though I may say we're paying 500 600 a month you're really paying a lot more and you're going to lose your sh uh, shorts uh, as far as the trade-in uh, which I build into the next loan so anyway yeah I, I understand that but the benefits of that is sharing our typically in a new RV most of the time so thank you for your feedback everybody and let's move on well this was quite interesting and it was <laughs> just a coincidence but uh, this is for uh, one of our listeners David uh, I think you've just got done giving me a really good um, uh, uh, detailed email uh, about episode 46 where we talked about the heat and some of the things we do to protect our rigs and he uh, asked me that I may have overlooked something or I didn't mention something and he's absolutely right in, the, in what it was is during these extreme heat uh, you know uh, well, here's a great example is like Cinder has a little uh, pool outside and we uh, constantly put water in and stuff. But you'd be amazed how much water evaporates out of her little pool every day. Well, he was saying that all your interior and, and if some reason you have an exterior too, uh, all your woodwork should be on a regular basis, especially in warm temperatures, uh, treated with... Uh, uh, a treatment to help keep them protected and moist uh, because this dry air tends to suck the moisture out of uh, out of your wood which is another way of saying dry rot so anyway that was a really really good suggestion is uh, uh, in during this summer I, and it doesn't just have to be Arizona folks as uh, treat your wood um, at least uh, clean them uh, anything that has an oil base that might help soak into the wood a little bit and protect them. That is a really, really good idea, and I did not think of that. And uh, maybe we just kind of do it naturally here, and um, and we're constantly dusting anyway, but to dust and also to revive your wood and protect it is probably very, you know, you know, it seems like such a subtle thing, but if you're going to hold on to your rig for, you know, several years... That's uh, uh, you will be very grateful to yourself that you took care of your wood so much. So anyway, David, I want to thank you very much for his suggestion. Uh, he takes a while before he catches up with my episodes. So I think this is episode 48, and he was just finished up 46. So hopefully by the time he gets this this one, he'll know how much we appreciate his feedback. And um, he was. Uh, also commenting on what I was talking about as far as communication and uh, uh, relating to people one and one and uh, so easy to get caught up in the texting email kind of world but what you don't you know pick up is the tones of people's voices and and people tend to get stuck on little things and they get misinterpret a lot of uh, a lot of messages and it could be a lot of wasted time and emotions and so uh, I always tend to be uh, uh, more want to talk to somebody either on the phone or talk to them one on one, and and I don't mind electronic things like like Skype. That feels one on one. I can still hear the tones of people and see their faces, and so that does feel much more personal, even though people are far away. So, um, old school, maybe human very much so 
I think it's healthier to try to make sure that at least hear the audio side of a conversation instead of trying to interpret in writing. And I'm the first one to tell you that I'm not a strong writer and probably not the best communicator as far as when it comes to writing and, and trying to uh, communicate my feelings of uh, or answering questions. And so I often get misinterpreted um, by people that are more analytical and love to try to communicate through texting and email. And I have to get to a point I stop and say, we're not talking anymore. We need to get on the phone and talk to each other because you're way over not understanding what I'm talking about. And most of the time, I'm not into soap operas, so I'm not trying to create a, a, a conversation to rile up the person on the other end. I'm trying to communicate the either say hi or see how someone's doing or or try to get some knowledge um, from them and so I tend to be a little old school so that's just how it is and that if that's a terrible thing about us old people I can live with that so sorry folks but be real be one on one uh, that's part of this RV thing the reason people like RVing so much is because they say the lifestyle the people yeah get it the people you actually go outside sit down have happy hour and talk to people people and that's why it feels so good because you live a, a whole life of hiding behind email at work and things like that and you forget what it's like to just talk to people and it can be wonderful so give it a try if you haven't tried it lately go talk to someone <laughs> anyway moving on Okay, so I, I wanted to talk about a subject I've talked about before, but I wanted, it was kind of uh, shown to me again, uh, twice. Uh, and so, uh, first of all, we had a wonderful opportunity to go visit one of our uh, listeners um, to go see their RV. And uh, they currently are, I think they had to go to uh, <laughs> Brazil to go to a wedding and come back. And my biggest concern to them is they had a trailer, a beautiful trailer, but only one air conditioner. And that was before all this 115 degree weather came. So I, I kind of suggested to them you might want to get an upright um, uh, air conditioner to help maintain it, the coolness in the RV. And then, boy, if that one fails up above, <coughs> then you're really in the hot water, <laughs> literally. And so, uh, to confirm that a little bit, a friend of my ours here at the RV park had a little bit bigger trailer, nice little trailer, and he's down here on business uh, and has to be here for several several months, and he's uh, using a trailer, and uh, his air conditioner failed, and he came home from work and he couldn't even stay in his RV and very nice guy and we had him come over and cool off and luckily we have the repair guy that's right by us here who also is the person who fixed my rig um, and turned out he just blew a circuit breaker And but the thing is, is his air conditioner was working so hard and he only had a 30 amp connection kept popping a circuit breaker so he came over and he um, saw a our, saw our port portable one and he goes I need one of those so uh, he shopped around locally, and I think he liked a Target, Lowe's, and Home Depot. And we're only a 10,000 BTU portable that we have in here to help just uh, take the pressure off of our big our, uh, air conditioners, which I, I know I've talked about this before, but it happened, and I wish more people would listen to my show, is, is uh, these little portables... If you're in hot conditions, and I know it's not just Arizona. There's another person that sent us an email the other day saying, oh, we can relate to you. We're going to get 100-degree weather and like 85 90% humidity. And it's like, that's even worse. So anyway, he went over uh, Home Depot, and he got a 1,400 BTU. I think he paid around $400 for it. I helped him uh, hook it up real quick. Boy, that cooled him down quick. And uh, uh, now he's you know, very grateful to... Um, know he's got a backup to uh, he's sleeping better and plus we wired it separately we actually got a heavy gauge wire 
<coughs> um, or cord, and he plugged it directly into the uh, uh, outdoor uh, plug out there because it's a 110, which is a separate away from his circuit breaker. So even if he pops the circuit breaker on his main air conditioner, the portable will still run because it's running directly from the pole in through a window. He's using a heavy gauge wire because that does pull some pretty good amps. And in the RV will continue to stay cool, especially when he's at work and come back and it's still comfortable. So anyway, there you go. I just wanted to kind of bring that up is uh, uh, the prices. Um, there's some great prices that were better than Amazon. Uh, Home Depot's got some decent. Uh, I think he bought an, what's called an LG. It's called LG. Uh, a 1400 BTU seems like a good unit. Uh, Sherry and I, we have a, a Honeywell uh, 10,000 BTU. Uh, it's been working fine. His was a little fancier than ours, but uh, uh, it's doing the job. And I really work the portable hard because I'd rather have that break than the ones up on the roof. So um, in hindsight, I probably would have bought in a 1400, but I'm, gl I'm just glad I had the hindsight, you know, uh, hindsight, I guess, to know that we were going to need this at least so anyway there's some feedback if you haven't bought a portable yet and you're thinking about getting one um, two things is one is try to get the highest BTU you can two is you might want to consider wiring it separately uh, from the RV and uh, so you in case you pop your circuits uh, internally here uh, to have it um, not hardwired but you can just use a uh, uh, um, heavy gauge because uh, you're using a lot more um, amperage connect it directly to your connections outside and that way you have a backup and so special and you know he doesn't have pets luckily but boy imagine if he had a pet came back and his you know our RVs uh, 90 degrees in there and he's got a cat or dog in there so that's been our concern so there you go some feedback about portable uh, air conditioners. Um, if you're going to get one, try to get a good one. Two, wire it separately. And you'll be very thankful you did. So, anyway, there you go. So, changing the subject just a smidgen, mm -hmm. <laughs> big time, is uh, I wanted to let you know Sherry and I, uh, uh, I made it uh, last week. We, well, this week, I guess it would be last week when you hear the show is we created a video I think it's only about nine minutes long and it's a documentary and uh, um, it was actually done from the heart it was very uh, to the point I had to skip a lot of uh, details as far as you know how we got into the situations we did but it basically tells the history of how Sherry and I got into RV full-time living and uh, ups and downs of it uh, we were actually uh, so you get a chance, uh, you might want to go back and check out our videos. I'll put a link to it in the description here. Um, it was I feel like it was a pretty personal video. And I, I like the, if you want to know a little more about how Sherry and I got to this point, uh, it'll answer a lot of questions. And it might address some of your feelings too and some of your hardships and, and positive things. But... Uh, Anyway, uh, I wish, you know, I could make longer ones, but, you know, when you tend to make something as long and drawn out, you lose people's attention. So, you know, how we had hardship in 2008, I mean, that's a whole other story. We just kind of jumped over it and just said, hey, this is what happened, and blah. And then uh, we did. So, anyway, the history of basically starts in 2006, where we, Sherry and I, were just, the kids were gone. It was an uh, empty nester type thing going on. Her and I are kind of each other's throat. We're maintaining a house up in Washington, doing the 9 to 5 and all that. And we're kind of like, rah, 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 and the kid, you know. And it was just as the kids moved out, so empty nest syndrome was big. And we just like, either we were just going to go different directions or we we're going to have to do something. And that's where the radical decision came in is like, let's just sell everything and let's go travel. Cause I had a marketing company that was making a killing. And uh, so we're, we had income coming in and it's like, we're still in our forties 
it's like let's go for it so we actually uh, <laughs> bought another truck which is the one I have today bought a Montana back then and uh, sold our house sold a whole bunch of stuff minimized ourselves, got everything down to a 10 by 10 storage unit and we actually pulled the RV into we lived in a you know a a block of different houses and stuff so our neighbors thought we were nuts and packed back this big monstrous thing to, up to the rig and filled it up with our personal belongings and pretty much the empty house was empty and we left and we just kind of said that was our first time we full timed and then the second part of that is recession hit company crashed and didn't go into details pretty much but we got wiped out pretty much had to go back to nine to five jobs so I went back to aerospace Luckily, I was able to get my pension years back. So we made the mission there of getting, you know, we want to go back to RVing, but our mission was fix everything that got broke, uh, get more out of debt, uh, take it to 55. So at least I have um, 18 years of pension um, that I could draw. At least I have that. I never had that before. And then whatever happens after that, we'll see what happens. But, and then Sherry, uh, but, then you can see in the new problem we got, we call it the ball and chain of how we're going to deal with health care. Because it was actually easier in 2006. We uh, were able to get insurance when we traveled before. I had my own business. We paid maybe around 500 a month. It wasn't that big a deal. Now this new program out there, and you keep hearing me talk about it, and it's like, grr. I swear to God, it's got to be better for Sherry and I. It's like, all right, when we're ready to travel again, that she stops working. We contact Obamacare, tell them how much I make as far as a pension, which is poverty level, if you want to look at it that way. And we probably could get affordable insurance that way for a while. That's so ridiculous. I just, it's pitiful that I have to show poverty or, um, or people that make less money than me have better medical and, 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 uh, coverage than I can get if I make too much money. It's ridiculous. It's just I could really probably start a debate here that probably we don't want to start, but it is true that there's folks out there that uh, either got disability and empower to them and they probably deserve it and stuff, or or just on welfare and things like that that they can actually go in and get medical coverage and even major kind of health care and have it covered. And it's just. I don't know things are just so upside down lately. I don't know how to deal with it. Um, so I don't know. Maybe that's the way to go. <laughs> I think maybe that's our solution. Or I don't know. Uh, but listen to the video, the documentary. It um, kind of addresses a little bit of our thoughts of what we thought about that kind of stuff and where we are today. It doesn't really answer the big question of what we're doing in the future yet. Sherry and I are molding that as we speak and we'll see how things go but anyway the video uh, I'll put a link in the description below it's a uh, Robin Sherry documentary so anyway I hope you enjoy it well here we go with another Rob's <laughs> deep subjects so anyway this conversation is about being a grandparent and even though I'm going to be talking about the feelings of a grandparent, this also applies to younger folks who are the recipients of us grandparents. So here's the interesting conversation. Once again, I'm not taking one particular side or the other. Is So I found ourselves, Sherry and I both have often said, we want to be closer to the grandkids. We want the kids to know us. So... At the same time, um, like, for example, we were over at Sherry's folks, and they're uh, her mom and dad, and they're older. And I keep making that comment, and he goes, you need to live. I mean, he wasn't scolding us or anything. He was just suggesting. He says, you need to live your life. And the grandkid stuff will come into alignment by itself. And basically what he was saying. And, uh, you know, Sherry and I were in Washington, and we have our kids are in two different states. Uh, one of our kids is more independent, very 
doesn't feel a, a real dependency as far as trying to connect. We're not having any, no, I mean, no real issues there. It, sometimes a little disappointing, but at the same time, it's nice to know that they're on their own and they're doing well, but and are not dependent on their parents uh, or grandkids and uh, or grandparents um, in a sense, but. At the same time, we're not really getting to know the grandkids much. A little sad, but at the same time, understandable. And then we have another side of the family, where it's just the opposite. We're kind of close to, and we're getting to know the grandkids a lot better. Um, however, where's the limit there? So here's the debate. is As you are become empty nesters, and you kind of get a chance to get into closer to the retirement mode, or whether you can even retire it at all, and... Uh, is there a limit of how far you should go about... Because I ain't no grandparents that they just live every day to try to be close to the grandkids. And I'm kind of wondering, is that... And it's not a problem with me and Sherry. But uh, is there such a thing as being too much of a good thing, I guess? Because, you know, no matter what, even though we're grandparents, we're still a mother and father. You'll never stop. And I don't care you young people out there what you think that all... You know, I've got my own family now and stuff. Your mother and father will always be your mother and father. You can be 30, we're still your mother and father. You can be 40, <laughs> we're still your mother and father. And you can be in your 50s, and yes, we're still finding Sherry's folks to be mother and father. And that's how it should be. <laughs> anyway, and so we tend to do the same with our kids. We, they are our kids. And even though our kids are now in their 30s, we are still a mother and father, and we will act like that. To not act like that is not healthy. Um, and all kids have to have somebody, not to be their friend all the time, but to help them grow and make their own decisions, obviously, but hear both sides of the fence as far as choices in life. And parents can be the perfect people for that, of course, they've got to use um, constructive feedback and not damaging to help guide their kids and be another voice in decision making. Um, that you know, one of my kids are really uh, good at it, and another one is uh, not so good. So it's one of those. It's like, well, we got to just give them time, and uh, maybe our voices will be stronger later. But you know, everybody's different, so. Uh, and some families grow and mature in different ways. So, uh, anyway, so the debate is, is like, okay, so you're getting, just to make our lives more complicated, so you're ready to become an RVer or a full-timer and retire, go see the world, go see the country. And then you got, okay, well, I got kids with grandkids, you know, with, yeah, kids with kids, <laughs> and our, our grandkids. How close do you want to get to them? So... Where do you find that middle ground? Now, Sherry and I feel that, like, while we're down here, this will be an opportunity for the grandkids to get to know us. We only have a three-year-old who's just now kind of getting the fact that, oh, that's grandpa and grandma and grandpa. And that's really cool. And uh, we're hoping that we leave an impression so each time we do see them, they'll say, oh, that's the special people, grandma and grandpa. Um... And hopefully have some very precious moments with them. Uh, but at the same time, Grandma and Grandpa aren't don't need to roll over and die yet. We need, uh, you know, we worked all of our lives. Uh, you're entitled, I feel, to go smell the roses. You help plant the roses. For God's sakes, let's go enjoy them now. So... Anyway, there's the discussion a little bit, and I'd love to hear your feedback through the comments. And I want to hear both sides of, a, of the recipient kids <laughs> with the grandkids and the parents. It's like, do you overdo it? Am I bringing up a subject that might be a little, you know, some families, it sounds like the grandparents are there all the time. And there's other issues where the grandparents come in handy when there may be a divorce or single mother helps out with the kids and they love it but at the same time 
do they love it or would they rather be living life a little bit because you know the timer is getting shorter so wow it's kind of a deep subject it's kind of different for everybody i know everybody's story is different um you know and health issues could be a big thing there would be a time that maybe my kids will have to take care of one of us maybe and uh so then they're gonna see us way too much so maybe it's better for us to play while we can stay out of their hair because we could be a burden to them later don't want to be nobody wants that um i kind of think that i'd like to be sailing off at tahiti somewhere and have a heart attack in the middle of the sea and just call it good and everybody can say well you know i didn't i wasn't a burden to everybody um <laughs> whatever I don't know. i just bringing this stuff up. It's just food for thought. But, you know, Sherry and I keep telling you, we're at this weird age. It's like, I always describe turning 55 as like having a check engine light in your car go on and you can't figure out what's why. So anyway, we're at the check engine light time is not too old, not too young type of thing. Uh, dealing with grandparents, uh, grandkids and making sure we're not hovering over our kids too much is there maybe we're not doing it enough maybe we should be more involved i don't know we could you know <laughs> it could be not enough i don't know but i i just feel like you know we all put in our time and it's time time to you know reap the harvest a little bit so anyway i just want to hear your feedback on becoming of age becoming the grandparents how involved are you with them and how your kids feel about it so you 20 30 and 40 year olds we want to hear from you too so there you go boy how time goes by fast this show was all over the place today wasn't it <laughs> anyway sorry about that all kinds of interesting things i really uh, very grateful to the listeners who've been sending us comments uh, this really uh, helps stimulate the conversation more. Um, it's interesting if I s um, strike somebody uh, in a negative way. I don't try to do that on pur purpose. I, I like to bring up the debate of things, but um, I, I noticed in some of the, one of the emails I got, somebody says, well, "I'm you know your stand in this." Well, my stand in some of the stuff isn't necessarily my stand it's more of a observation and then i like to bring that observation forward so anyway it's all in good uh debate good relationships good uh conversations with people and really do appreciate that so please keep the comments coming in we're very grateful just a reminder uh to contact us just go to the websites that you're listening to uh, either rvtalkradio.com or outdoortravelradio.com. Go to the contact page and feel free to uh, address uh, anything you want us to talk about there. And um, to talk to me directly, you can go to Rob and just type this in your email, rob at rvtalkradio.com and shoot me a note that way if you like. i uh, love to hear from you. And you can go to any of our Facebook pages or groups, hit the, mes the message button at the top, and talk to us directly. It just shows up right on my cell phone. It's like, all right, um, when I'm not driving or something like that, I'll definitely answer your questions. So communication, there you go. And if it's something really deep or something like that, I've been known to call our listeners um, about something that they've asked us about that I think uh, I could do better. Remember, here I go talking about that, talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I'll ask for a phone number or I can tell them they can call me and uh, we'll actually have a real conversation. We love hearing from you guys and we've had some really great conversations with people that we call them up and they're just shocked that we actually would call them. And it's like, yeah, we, we're we happy to talk to you and, and we always learn something from them. So it's not a one-way street. We're not know-it-alls over here at all. Uh, there's plenty to learn from all the people we uh, that listen to our show. We just kind of stimulate the conversation. But anyway, it's time to move on. I want to thank everybody for listening. Uh, remember, we come out every Monday. Also, every episode goes on Outdoor Travel Radio also. So you can listen to us there and catch old older episodes if you like. And uh, so we ask you to please take the time to subscribe if you're listening to our video version of this. 
uh, shoot us some notes. Please like our stuff. And please, if you would, would you please share our information and let people discover us? It's really, we, we really depend on you to help us with that because um, we can't grow without your help. So if we're doing our right job and you like what we're doing, please share us with other folks. So anyone, anyway, uh, uh, if you're not in the RVing yet, I'm, I hope everything goes well for you when you do. If you're already an RVer, we ask everybody to be safe and enjoy your life and keep in touch. So I'm Rob from RV Talk Radio. Talk to you next Monday. Bye now. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.